allegedly charged with breaking the internet after recent eye-popping content that was released directly on their social media platforms. More on this later. Yo, yo, yo. Man, oh man. It's been a crazy journey for your boy Diddy, man. They said they just moved him and whatnot, man. But uh, he got some things going on right now that, uh, you know, he was supposed to be doing a bond. The bond didn't work. He offered up to $100 million. That didn't work. They're saying that, you know, he's going to be telling on the executives. The thing was, they're saying that he's blackmailing the big executives to be able to have power. And... If you know, like I know, the executives run the show. You know, he's a gatekeeper. He got put as a gatekeeper through the executives to bring in more artists. But, you know, when you're fighting with higher power, you know, he's trying to get, you know, dirt on the executives to put that back on them, you know, so he can have leeway to get out of anything that he wants to get out of and have them, you know, under his, on, his, on their knees, basically crawling to him, you know. And then they got the Kim Porter book. You know, they got a lot of evidence coming out about that as well. It's a lot of things that's about to come to the light, man. And a lot of artists or celebrities, period, scared, man. These guys are scared because they know he got a lot of blackmail on a lot of people. I mean, he's been doing this since the early 90s. So you can imagine who's about to be coming up, man. You can understand he's not going to do all that time. They're not going to let him out and for that being said, he's going to tell on everybody. However many people, he probably going to tell on some extra just in case or just because so he can not have no time, you know. And uh, I got a lot of uh, evidence on this video. Well, not a lot of evidence, but a lot of things that you need to check out, you know, rather than give me y'all opinion on, on what y'all take on this, man. Hit them comments, man. You know, hit that subscribe button while you edit, man. I appreciate all the love and support, man. Y'all got to check this one out. This is an update on your boy P. Diddy on what's going on, where he's getting moved to, and uh, what he has in store. So y'all check this one out. I'm out. Why do you think we haven't heard from anyone until now? You know, I, I just feel like a lot of people are in shock. A lot of people are dealing with it um, in their own way. Um, but in times like these, I mean, we should come together. We should talk about it as a community. It's easy to divide and point fingers, but unity is where you build. You can have a stronger future for the culture. I mean, Diddy's been an icon for decades. We've all listened to his music. We've all been around him, that, at least in my era, and have, have looked up to him. Um, and in this situation, it's super unfortunate, but it's important to learn a lesson right right now and ensure the next generation understands how to move differently with transparency and in integrity. And, and I think transparency and integrity moving forward should be non-negotiable. I hear you. And look, we, we need that in every culture. Um, you hear yeah. and may know what I hear, which is uh People aren't coming out because they either suspected this about him or they don't want to have any connection to him. And then I guess there's another group who's worried they're going to get pulled in, which is one of the suggestions uh, from prosecutors. When you were with him, you had to have heard the kinds of things that other people heard about uh, what did he could be about on the dark side uh, and excesses of his. What did you make of what you heard and what did you ever see for yourself that gave you an opinion about what he was about? Well, um, for myself and I think a lot of other people in this industry, I mean, it's all a shock because, you know, we've never seen uh, the stuff that's being said and the stuff that people are finding out. Like, I've never been in rooms that people are talking about and I never knew they existed. And a lot of people in the industry can can agree with me on that sense. Like you all wanted to go and have a good time at a Diddy party, you know, and you wanted to be inspired. You wanted to go out and have a good time. And then you wanted to go the next day to work and you wanted to work hard in this good vibe, you know. And so to see where we are now, um, I just think everybody is still trying to 
digest it and still trying to understand it. Um, and even though, you know, there's still allegations and it's not anything that's just allegations. factual yet, but mm -hmm. it is, it's hurtful and it's, um, and it's confusing to a lot of people. I mean, we all grew up, um, you know, listening to Puff and, and, and Bad Boy mm -hmm. and they represented success and resilience, but it comes with responsibility. And when people fall, um, right now we just need to use it as a moment to reflect, not to criticize, but find a better way to move forward as leaders, individuals, um, in, in this culture that we're in right now. He was even out here rapping with some of the women that he essayed and giving us details about how he successfully got away with it. The first song was called Magnificent, and in this song, Rick blatantly rapped about witnessing Diddy essaying the members of a girl group that was signed to his record label at the time called Total. Rick said, I made a transition from the thieves to the biggest executive death jams ever seen. The game never changed, money's still a focal, but it's time to essay the game like Puffy did Total. Even before we could fully process this BS, 50 brought to our attention the lyrics of another Rick Ross song called UOENO, -E in which he flat out bragged about essaying a woman like it was a flex. He raps, put Molly all in her champagne, she ain't even know it. I took her home and I enjoyed that, she ain't even know it. 50 posted multiple photos of Diddy and Rick Ross, as well as a screenshot of the lyrics on his IG page and captioned it, what the F, at some point, you just gotta do the right thing. And do y'all remember the time that 50 posted this photo of Diddy and Rick Ross seemingly about to kiss each other on the lips during a performance? Child, the signs were all there, y'all. Around this same time that all this was going on, the interrogation video of the man who shot up the Trump National Hotel back in 2018 started going viral. And in the video, there was some tea being spilled about Rick and Diddy. He said he was one of Diddy's freak off slaves and that Rick Ross, Big Sean, and DJ Khaled were some of the people who would come through and pound him. He said he even caught some STDs at one point, but they kept sleeping with him. Combs. Puff Daddy. Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would, uh, he would marry me and tell me what to do with Cassie. And I was like a slave, okay? For them, that's what I was. That's all, all right? Um, I caught burpees, and I came back, and I seen him for the burpees, and won. But, Diddy and Ross, which are good buddies, okay? Mm -hmm. They, they, they gay. Who? Both. Diddy and Ross. And Cabot. They all gay, okay? DJ Kelly, Rick Ross, yeah. and Diddy? Yeah. They're all gay? Yeah. Gotcha, all right. I seen the liquor I'm dragging myself. I Diddy and Cassie. Okay, it's not good. He drinks all the time. All right, he calls it Gigi. Let's leave it. All right. I've settled five, four point one two five million dollars with Diddy. Okay. okay, was he scared that I was an explosive? I don't want to talk about Diddy right now. I want to talk about you. Help me understand you. I mean, who? Big yikes. See, one thing about Tia Kemp, she may tell a joke, but baby, she never tells a lie. However, people still feel like she's part of the problem because she knew everything that Rick was getting up to and still decided to keep her mouth shut till it was convenient for her. As usual, people had their own thoughts about this. Like this person who said she better realize withholding information is a serious charge and knowing too much can and will make you an accomplice. Well, Tina, you're trying to point fingers at Rick Ross, but you're just as guilty by knowing and not telling. You may be incriminating yourself. It's also called Miss prison a felony. Look it up. Another person said she owes him no loyalty when ordering hits on her. For the slow dummies on the short bus, I'm snitching too. But now I want to know your thoughts. What do y'all think about Tia exposing Rick Ross for unaliving all these people? And do y'all think she should also be charged as his accomplice or just sit on all this information till now? The Jay-Z victims are gonna be worse. <laughs> They're worse because of the psychological torture that comes along with what he does. Like do, you I said, think, do you think JC, Jay-Z is scared right now? Oh, he's terrified. He's terrified. He's losing confidence everywhere. But the only confidence he's worried about keeping secure are those white boys that he worked for. That's his only loyalty. Not even to his wife is he loyal. But what what do you think? And just again, hypothetically, if 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 his kids, as young as they are, asked, Daddy, who's that man on TV getting arrested? Isn't that your friend? What would his response be? He wouldn't respond. He does he would just laugh and walk away. That's mm. Sean Carter. Oh. He doesn't own up to anything ever. 
Mm-hmm. Gaslight you right in your face. Do it smooth. He's a sociopath. He doesn't have any real feelings or emotions. Everything is transactional. You know? I honestly, I think the only time he's really comfortable and happy in his own skin is when he's laying in the warm embrace of a man. Jack, come on. Jack. What? (laughs) Come on, man. You can't paint those kind of pictures in the people's heads, man. (laughs) Why? It got painted in the mind with the videotape that I saw of him looking very happy in the embrace of a man. I didn't want to believe it. Mm, damn, okay. Well, Jack, I, I, I got it. it. Then the, it all made sense, you know? Jack, what was the, the last conversation that you and JC had? How did that go? He told me he was going to end my career and make sure no one in the world ever knew I existed. And I told him it was a pretty big world. And we'll see, Sean. <laughs> Amazing hat trick. Wow. The man put a gun in your head to tell you sing. Or he's going to blow your brains out. Uh, While he's... That's what Sean Carter done to me. Don't nobody want to believe it. No way. That's why I didn't talk about what happened to me. Because I knew that they would say that I was making it up. I spoke up for other people Mm. with things that I knew to be true. I'm a victim no different than the rest of them, which is how I know they all victims. I'm one too. You don't know what it feels like to wake up in your hotel room and to know that your husband left and was paid to leave. And that nigga is sitting there waiting for you to wake up, watching you sleep. Or the car that comes and picks you up. And you better get in. Mm. Or the studio session that you booked. You show up for work and everybody's gone, but that nigga said everybody got paid to leave. It truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh, yes, he's literally. It's about the Benjamin. Well, now when we come back, we're going to talk more with Puffy. And if you want to hang out, more than welcome to stick around, my brother. All right, we'll be right back with more right after this. It mm-hmm. truly is about the Benjamin, as we see. Oh, yes, he's, he's literally. It's Shelly is about the Well, now, when we come back, we're going to talk more with Puffy, and if you want to hang out, more than welcome to stick around, my brother. Oh, All right, we'll be right back with more right after this. All you got to do is hawk to her and spit on that thing. You get me? I don't get you. I think you got to uh, demonstrate. Hawk to her. Woosah moments. Me talking about situations for over more than a decade and a half. And then all of a sudden, everybody woke up like, whoa, yo, we thought you were crazy. Yeah, I am crazy. I'm crazy to tell a mother on three forms of public transportation across a bridge to get to work to support me that, hey, I may have to pass on these opportunities for scholarships because I'm going to write a song and we're going to eat. For the rest of our lives that's crazy but what i am not is a liar that i'm not all i did was give the science i was ignored laughed at ridiculed things of that nature but that's okay my god is so much bigger than my god got me and i got you and get them to agree to things like okay if you see somebody with the chain on with that little vial of blood on their neck well they are scientologists bro so it's definitely going to be footage of them somewhere doing some compromising. That's how a lot of these agreements get made. People get endorsed. How they get that deal out of nowhere? Because, like, he one of them Scientology people, bro. Because that's probably where he got that from. And being somebody who people call when things get crazy, some of the most powerful people I bodyguarded for like to get tied up. You feel me? They got videos of them getting tied up, somebody spanking them with a whip. A lot of powerful guys operate like that. So the things I'm seeing with him, it all makes sense. It all makes sense. You're not gonna you're not gonna settle a lawsuit with somebody for 30 million, bro, if it's not some truth there. 
You ever heard of Gene Deal? Yep. Interviewed him. Okay. Well, when you see people like that coming out, it's because they know for a fact, like, it's things that's going on they don't agree with, but they not man enough to say, you know what? I'm not standing for this. That stuff about Diddy real, bro. Well, what do you think about the Meek Mill accusations? <sighs> okay. Now, you know, I used to bodyguard Rocky Fresh, who was signed to Rose. Yep. All right. Now, Meek said he wouldn't do a song with Rocky because Rocky wasn't street. So, little things that take place, and people will expect certain things out of him. But now, with the, some of this stuff's coming out, if you look at his body of work, it's, it's been strange things in his history. And, you know, you go on his Twitter page, you, you, you click on his likes, bro. You see things that he's liking. That's questionable. Would you let me call you daddy? Hell no. No, bro. And these boys strange, bro. The things they into is strange. I've seen so much. I've seen a lot, bro. So, like, with him... Look how he responded to the situation. Not one time did he come out and say these things are a lie. Did you see that? Yep. He didn't say that. He didn't deny it. He, that's... No, he didn't deny nothing. Because if he deny it, what's going to come out? Footage. You think, so you think Diddy has footage on Meek? For sure. He got cameras through his whole career. Every millionaire, billionaire I've been around, bro, they got... So I know what's going on. So if I go into the bathroom, I'm going to cut the lights off, cut the flash on my phone, and look at the mirror. If it's got that little hollow circle at the bottom, well, there's cameras in there. It's all They're going to be all through the crib. It's the facts, bro. When it comes to that camera stuff, people not denying it because they know they was there. What do you think about Diddy's friends not defending him and, you know, 50 Cent kind of pointing that out about Jay-Z? 50 Ben knew it. Fifth Ben knew these things. 50 will pay a private investigator to follow you around and to go to your party. At that top level, that's how they plan, bro. That's how they come in that top level. People not finna come out and deny it because, all right, this search warrant come, they pull these, these files, and they see you at that crib. What you about to say? What are you going to say? If you know you didn't do nothing, you're going to say, man, that's a lie. Nobody's saying that. So what does that mean? One insider even spilled the tea to media takeout, claiming that Diddy had paid Shakira a visit before his death, and things got real ugly. Allegedly, Diddy roughed him up pretty bad. The source said, Kim was seeing Shakir and Diddy found out, and he went apish. He tracked Shakir down to his hotel. Then Diddy went up there without security and beat him to a bloody pulp. After Shakir's tragic death, Kim and Diddy's toxic relationship dragged on for years, and Kim found it really hard to break away from him because of their three kids, Christian and the twins, Jesse and Delilah. But it wasn't just the kids keeping Kim tied to Diddy. Multiple insiders have spilled that even after they split, Diddy kept a tight grip on Kim's life. He allegedly had her followed everywhere she went and straight up banned her from dating other men. Meanwhile, Diddy's former bodyguard, Jean Deal, claimed Diddy was cheating on Kim the whole time, with both women and men. He was with every chick, every dude, whoever he wanted to be with, you know, when Kim was alive, uh, playing with them, doing whatever he had to do. And according to Gene Deal, Diddy wasn't just messing with Kim emotionally. He allegedly got physical too, and Kim had no choice but to defend herself. There's an incident that him and Kim had when she took the court school when they were fighting, you know, and ripped his whole wrist up. That's what helped Puff, that's what, that's how Puff got on drugs. You know what I'm saying? Those painkillers. Because Kim wasn't taking it from him. Gene also called out Diddy for faking those heartfelt tributes to Kim, saying Diddy's been fooling everyone. And when the interviewer suggested that Diddy might actually regret how he treated Kim, Gene wasn't having it. And he even hinted that Diddy was probably relieved when Kim passed, because she knew all his darkest secrets and was allegedly planning to expose everything in her book. It seems like he got a lot of regret when it comes to importing that's what it seems to me, he's living with a lot of regret. Bro, come on, stop the bullshit. And he got you fooled too, huh? You know what I'm saying? Kim know all his deepest secrets. You understand? Kim knew why he was using the butt plug. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Kim probably told all that shit in the book. You understand? That up and got missing the day she died.
every dude, whoever he wanted to be with, you know, when Ken was alive, uh, praying with them, doing whatever he had to do to be with them. So while Kim was pregnant with Christian, Diddy started cozying up to none other than Jennifer Lopez. And when Kim found out, she wasn't having it and broke things off, moving out of Diddy's house. But of course, the drama didn't stop there. After that infamous nightclub shooting with J-Lo back in 1999, J-Lo dipped, and that's when Diddy came crawling back to Kim. Unfortunately, Kim took him back, and in 2006, they welcomed their twin daughters. But even with twins in the mix, Diddy didn't change his ways. He kept mistreating Kim, allegedly putting his hands on her, having her followed. And get this, former bad boy artist Mark Curry claimed that Diddy even had Kim's house Wiretapped. Speaking of Kemp Porter, because you knew Kemp Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? Bust her nose, man. You know, but it, just, it, it was all, you know, uh, insecurities. Anytime a man would go out his way to wiretap someone's phone or, or put taps in their homes just to monitor their conversation, that's a sign of insanity. And while all this drama was unfolding, Diddy was still playing the field behind Kim's back. The ultimate betrayal came when Kim discovered Diddy had been hiding a secret child with his longtime associate, Sarah Chapman. Sarah gave birth to Diddy's daughter, Chance, in July 2006, just months before Kim had their twin daughters. And for Kim, that was the final straw, on top of everything else she had witnessed and experienced while being with Diddy.